I thought I'd take a quick break from some of the project videos I've been doing with some products I've been receiving lately. I have a couple more that I want to do here soon, but in the meantime, I want to show you some transitional steps that I'm making to get my Proxmox cluster set up with several mini PCs that I have behind me in my server rack. Uh, I replaced my Proxmox server. I did a little clip on that, which is I have my 4U Proxmox server down below here. And I'm replaced it with the Protectly VP 6650, which is right here. And that the 6650 is doing pretty well at replacing uh, the 4U server that I had because it was just an old Ryzen 7 1700. And so the single core performance on this is even better. It has a few, th you know, a few less threads. It has more cores. So, you know, the performance is holding up pretty well. I'm running, I'm running actually a lot of stuff on this system right now because it's doing everything my old system did, plus a couple of new things I've added on. And one thing that I've added on to this uh, that I'm running on here that I never ran on my old one is OpenSense. Uh, I am transitioning from a bare metal installation to a virtualized, you know, installation of OpenSense. I never thought I would, would do that, but... The main reason was I only had one Proxmox node, and I know that if I'm tinkering around and messing with something or trying something, I've really screwed up my Proxmox systems before and had to redo them, and I don't want to do that when I have OpenSense running on it and completely destroy the you know my network, right, uh, if my o Proxmox goes down. But since I, ever since I started pondering, you know, creating a cluster, now that kind of changes things a little bit because I can move OpenSense between these different systems and be able to keep my network running. So, and now I also have a nice, you know, Proxmox backup server set up and those sorts of things, which I never really had initially when I first set up Proxmox. So with all those things combined, I feel much more comfortable and confident and this more experience that I have with it, that my network will stay up and running, hopefully just as much or even greater than before. But uh, what I would like to do, my goal, besides just creating a cluster is, now that I have OpenSense virtualized, I'm hoping I can be able to live migrate that from the VP6650 over to say this, I have a GoWin R86S U4 in the corner here, this small little system. And I'm hoping I can live migrate OpenSense from this box to this box without using high availability features in OpenSense, but just using the migration feature as part of the Proxmox cluster to live migrate a VM over and it should just be like a, a slight blip, just like a high availability has a little bit of a blip as well. It's not like 100% uptime. It's like you got a, a split second, it's gonna be down. But I'm hoping I'll have to achieve the same effect here without using high availability features in OpenSense. And the main reason I'm not doing that is I only have one public IPv4 address and I'm not really messing with IPv6 too much, but um, I want to, this is kind of a good compromise for me because I don't have two separate WAN connections or you know, multiple IP addresses that I can have that are static IP addresses from my ISP. So this, I think this is a good compromise because like some people do have availability, they're just making their firewall high availability basically. And they have like a third you know, router, like their ISP router or something in front. So it's not really on the edge of their network. And I just really want to have one copy of OpenSense but I want to be able to float it between different machines. And this, this should give me the ability to do that because I can actually, you know, move it over to this system, reboot the primary system. You know, and then when I'm done rebooting, I just move it back. And, you know, it should be very minimal downtime on network um, activity. And uh, if I want to add a node or swap a node out later, I should be able to just add the node and remove a node and I can just move open sense around. It makes it a lot more fluid than a bare metal installation because a bare metal installation is I have to clear off a new system, put a new installation on it, and you know, <laughs> and then I have to move everything over and get it all configured. You know, some of the interfaces I have to reconfigure all the interfaces and stuff with a VM, even though I'm using different hardware. I'm if, as long as I map the you know bridges the same way, it doesn't matter what the heart underlying hardware is. So I love that flexibility. So I'm going to start off with three nodes. And I have the capacity to do five with this switch here. I'm going to show you in a minute. I might add another two nodes in the future because you're supposed to keep them in odd numbers. That way you have a majority vote. Uh, so you're confident that like, yeah, these servers are down. If you have a majority of the systems saying the same thing, uh, nothing's like misreporting something for whatever reason because of a malfunction or whatever, uh, it gives you more confidence in that.
that your cluster is healthy. So I thought I'd show you a closer look of how, how things plugged in. It's not perfectly connected yet it's because I'm just getting things prepped and ready to go for the cluster. There's some, some of these interfaces here I don't even have enabled. I just want to get ready for the cluster when, when I'm ready to do it. So this is, as I mentioned, is my Protective VP6650. has my main, used to replace my old Proxmox server. has my OpenSense box on it now in a virtual machine. I was running it on the Goen RD6SU4. That was my primary bare metal installation of OpenSense. Now I have cleared that off, so I'm going to be able to add that. I have Proxmox installed on it, but I haven't added it to the cluster yet because I'm going to show those steps in a future video. So I'm just, I just got it prepped and ready to go. And I have some of the network interfaces configured already. Okay, so I have two separate unmanaged switches here. I could do this in two different uh, dedicated VLANs for the purposes of what I need them for, but I already had these unmanaged switches and I thought I'd put them in good use because it just makes it easy. And they're also 2.5 gig interfaces, whereas these switches up here are all only one gig interfaces with some 10 gig connections on the side here. There's six on each one of these switches. But this first switch up here, I'm going to be using as my WAN connection switch. So this is going to be interesting. Any nodes that I want to be able to migrate OpenSense to, which would be this box and this box, I have both of them plugged in. And I have one of those connected up here to my WAN connection that's connected to my cable modem uh, back behind my rack back here. Let's see, can you see it? Um, where is it? Oh, down lower. <laughs> it's back there. Okay, so that's my cable modem. Basically, what's going to happen is only one of these nodes is going to have OpenSense active at a time. As you can see, you see how these two lights are blinking more, and this one's not really doing too much activity here. It's just it, this interface is not active yet, and I have OpenSense running. It's going to be running on this system, and then when I migrate it over to this system, that one's going to be the primary WAN connection, and this one's not going to be doing anything because I've, ded I've dedicated these two interfaces on these two boxes just for the WAN, and I have nothing else running on those interfaces because I don't want to interfere with the WAN connection. Uh, so the switch below here, I'm going to dedicate to the Corusync network, which is for the cluster, the network traffic. I have five ports here. So this is where I said I can add up to five nodes in my cluster using this network. This will be that where all the traffic communicates to. It's recommended that you give you know, your cluster traffic its own interfaces so that none of your other traffic like I have some 10 gig interfaces that I'm using to pull data faster between that and my TrueNest box, which is way down here. Um, TrueNest box, and also I have my Proxima backup server. It's only 2.5 gig interfaces, but th it's still higher speed traffic that could be transferring off these boxes. You don't want that traffic interfering with your cluster traffic. So I think that'll work out pretty well. I already tested out this part. This is where I'm saying you do it in stages and in incremental stages. I, I have OpenSense running on this box, even though I don't have it in a cluster. I decided to connect it to this switch and connect it up to my cable modem to see if I have this system plugged in here to make sure it's only going to work. You know, this is a, basically like a, a breakout switch almost where I, I can just break it out to different nodes. And I wanted to see if that actually works just fine by itself without even doing, uh, without even involving a cluster in it. And it works just fine, which is great. So that's what I was hoping for. I know other people have done that before. So I just wanted to give it a shot. And then for my main apps on my network, I have it ran off one of these 10 gig connections here and a 10 gig connection here. I want to get a shorter cable here to make it match this one. <laughs> I just don't have one yet. So I just stuck this longer one in here. So these four interfaces I'm using for these two things, I have the same VLANs tagged on them. So I have all the VLANs I need for my network here and here. And then the second one I'm using for on this box and this box is just for my dedicated 10 gig network that I have other devices plugged into like my TrueNAS box and and I also have like some of these other like uh, backup server and those sorts of things connected to the 10 gigabit network. I hope you found this walkthrough interesting of how I'm going to go from one node to a three node cluster in Proxmox by sl making slow incremental changes because I feel like that's kind of the, how I usually like to roll you know just make sure things working as I go because it's a lot easier to troubleshoot. So the first thing I had to do is get off my old uh, bare metal installation. I moved it to a VM and on here and I tested it out and it's running pretty well for my network right now. And even though I have everything kind of in one basket right now, I have it backed up to my Proxmox backup server right here. What I also did recently as well is 
I, I tested out the WAN connection on this unmanaged switch to make sure with this other box connected in to make sure that everything is still working and that still works fine. So I know the WAN connection on the unmanaged switch works with another node plugged in with nothing happening on that second node. It's just kind of there as a standby. And when I transfer the VM over or the live migration, it should be able to pick up the WAN connection and go keep going. Because I'll be using the same MAC address in the VM. And I actually hard coded the same MAC address I used for my physical box. So I'm just kind of using that same one to make sure that when things get transi transitioned over, it's all using the same MAC address. And so I'm making sure that works. And then I got Proxmox set up on this node and it's empty. I'm ready to connect it, you know, start a cluster on this main system and add that node to there. This Proxmox system that has Home Assistant on it. I just need to like make sure I can get it added to the node, which I don't expect to be too many problems. And once I have that, then I'm, once I have the cluster created, I'm going to create a test uh, OpenSense VM. I have a couple laying around, so I'll probably use one of those OpenSense VMs that I'm using for testing. And I'll probably put a virtual virtualized machine or something behind it, or maybe plug a real one in or something. And then I wanna move it from this node to this node and see if I still have an internet connection and see if there's just like a little tiny blip. If I, if I can do that on my a test VM of OpenSense, then I will try my actual network one. I mean, I mean, I could just try my actual one if nobody's on the network, but it, it's kind of good just to play around with it and test it and see if there's any unknowns that I haven't thought about yet before I try it on my main network uh, to make sure I don't take anything down. Proxmox has some replication features so you can replicate the VM from your whatever node to another node. And it makes the lab migration a little quicker because it don't have to transfer the difference, the blocks that are different of data. And I'm wondering as well, I haven't thought about this too much, but I'm wondering if the main main node goes down for some reason, hardware fails or whatever. If I have a replicated copy on the second node, I might be able to just uh, spin it up. And now, I think I've seen people say if you haven't migrated, you have to do like a manual migration to tell it, hey, use this now because it might just be kind of in standby just kind of sitting there until you do a migration so you might have to kind of tweak your little file or something i have to look and see how that works to tell it okay migrate this node and then run a command or something and then it'll spin up so that may be kind of cool too because then it already has a copy on the other box and it's been replicated periodically so it should be pretty up to date so if the hardware fails i could just say spin up that uh, replicated copy and you know manual migrate it, right? <laughs> and that should be good to go. In a future video, from, I wanna show how I'm gonna do this full cluster setup, and I'll show the physical connections in case I make some changes from what I have here, and so I'll show the final connections that I have set up, and I'll show the steps that you need to take to get the cluster set up. And so until next time, I'll see you guys later.